Thank you and good morning. Good to see each and every one of you beautiful people and I want to say Happy New Year to, uh, to each and every one of you. You know, I like the new year and uh, it seems like for me uh, there's just, uh, just a fresh excitement about the changing of the calendar uh, each and every year and uh, with it uh, the feeling and belief uh, of a new beginning or a new start, uh, a new chapter, you know, uh, has, has begun in each and every one of our lives. Uh, with the changing of the calendar, of course, comes renewed hope uh, and anticipation of the new year being better than the previous year. How many of you would like to have 2016 be better than 2015? Can I, see a, can I see a hand or get an amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, why don't we just believe right, right from the beginning here uh, of this new year that this year is going to be the best year of your life? How about that? That would be all right, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, yes. I believe that. I believe that. I believe God wants each and every one of us uh, to have uh, the best year of our lives. And I want to begin by saying today that, you know, regardless of what did happen last year, regardless of what didn't happen last year, uh, this year is packed full of potential and possibilities and it's just waiting for us uh, like a gift to unwrap it, unwrap it and enjoy uh, the new day, the new week, the new month and the new year that we're beginning, that we're beginning today. You know, there's something really significant and important about the first day, the first week, the first month of every new year, which brings with it, I believe, added incentives uh, to make this year different than all the previous, uh, previous years to date. And I want to encourage you, I want to exhort you and stir you today to determine uh, that today is going to be a new day for you, that this week, this month, this new year is, uh, is going to be uh, better than probably anything that every one of us could think, dream, or imagine. Something changes within us, I believe, when we begin to understand the power and the principle of, uh, of what so many people uh, today uh, are, are making, uh, and that is maybe New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals or plans or priorities uh, this time of year, everybody just kind of has that opportunity uh, to, to maybe chart out a different course that, uh, that, we, that we want to travel this next year. Uh, I call this principle the principle of first. What is the principle of first? Well, the principle of first is a principle of exactly about that. It's a principle about priorities. It's a principle about goals and dreams and resolutions. Uh, it's a principle about order. We're going to see here in just a little bit. The principle of first is a principle about order. Now here, let me say something maybe that's shocking uh, right out of the gate here. Uh, that this principle, the principle of first, governs every aspect, variable, and ratio of our lives, whether we know it or not. You're living out the principle of first, and every person out there outside our windows here and doors today, everybody is operating out of this principle of first. Whether you know it or whether you don't. Every person operates daily, monthly, and yearly out of the principle of first. So what is the principle of first? Here it is. The principle of first, write this down, is, is simply this. Whatever we do with the first determines the rest. Matter of fact, can we all say that? Whatever we do with the first determines the rest. Uh, when we put God first, all other things fall into proper place and in proper order, as we'll see here this morning. The principle of first is a concept uh, not created by culture or the latest motivational uh, conference speaker on today's pop culture circuit. The principle of first, believe it or not, was created by God. God has given us the formula for a successful living governed by the principle of first. I call it God first. And so today we're launching a New Year's message series simply entitled God First. And uh, we're going to 
uh, lay some foundation here this morning, and we're going to spend the next eight weeks unpacking what it really means to live and to lead the God first life or the principle of first. Um, the Bible, the Bible begins with the principle of first. It begins by communicating to everyone and to everything God's first. God's first. All right. We're going to look at that here in just a little bit. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, God's first. If we want to live a blessed, abundant, victorious, and overcoming life, then we must live the God first life. Amen? Amen. You'll, you'll, you'll amen me by the time we get done here. All right? The God first life places God as one's number one priority. Number one priority in your life should be God, if it's not. To live a life, quote, in order with the Creator and all of His creation, a person must put God first. To place God, now listen to this, to place God in any other position other than first is to live life out of order. How many of you have ever seen a soda pop machine, a vending machine? And it's got all the pop and it's got the Fritos and the Doritos and the Twinkies and the Ho-Hos, you know, right behind the glass. And you're like, oh, oh, and you stand and stare at it. It is, oh, I'd sure like to have a, have a Twinkie about right now. And, and you go to put your $1.50 in and you know what? You get closer to the, to the vending machine and it says, out of order. What does that mean? That means it, it, what, what's behind the glass isn't working. It isn't working. And you know when I look at most people's lives, you know I see those three words written across their forehead, out of order. Their lives are out of order. Their finances are out of order. Their friendships are out of order. Their marriages are out of order. Are you with me? Their, their, uh, their relationships are out of order. What's that mean? It's not working. It's not working. So how many of you want to live a life out of order? Oh, no, none of us. How many want to live a life in order, functioning? You put the money in and the Doritos drop, right? We all want a life that works. Well, uh, I believe that's what New Year's resolutions really are all about. That something we know intuitively, something's not working in the previous year. Something didn't, so, we can be better, we can do better, we can have more. And, and we make usually this, this week, uh, this month, especially of the new year, uh, we attempt to what? Make some changes. Why? Because we know in here something's out of order. Something's out of order. The majority of people, I believe this with every atom of my being, the majority by the millions, if not billions of people in our world today are living lives out of order. Out of order. By placing simply God second, third, fourth, or 44th in their lives. If at all. There's some people God's not even in their life. Are you with me? And they're wondering, why isn't life working for me? Well, we're going to get to that here in just a little bit. It's very simple. They haven't placed God first in their lives. The most successful, the most joyful, the most fulfilled people on our planet today are the ones who have daily decided to put God first in every aspect and area of their lives. The most happiest, satisfied, and most content people in the world are the ones who have chosen, because it's a choice, to put God first. Now, that doesn't mean they don't have problems. That doesn't mean they don't have, every once in a while, some issues with the kids. All right, I'm not saying life is, isn't popping up petunias and budding roses every single moment. But, but life is working when you put God first. It's in order, and God gets involved in your life when you put God first. The God first life, again, was established by God from the very beginning for every person and for everyone to see and to live out. So the principle of first was established by God in the very beginning. If you look at this with me, in Genesis 1, 1. The very, the very first sentence in the Word of God is about the God first life, about living and placing God first. Simply says this, 
In the beginning, who? God. In the beginning, God. Before there was anything, there was what? There was God. Before there was creation, before there was uh, insects and animals, before there was land, sea, and sky, before there was human beings, there was God. It is how God set our world up from the very start, from the very beginning, on the first day. I'm talking about first, God. On the first day, it was God. That's all there was. So God was first, right from the beginning. The Bible tells us that. With God, I found this principle to be true. God will never be second. God will never be second. Third, fourth, fifth, 44th, 94th, 1004th. In our hearts, lives, marriages, families, homes, communities, world, or country. With God, he's either first or he's nothing. He will not share the platform. He, and you, you, you know, well, I don't like he, he doesn't care whether we like it or not. He's God. It's kind of like a parent. I don't care whether, you, you know, the kids don't, well, I don't care whether you like it or not, you're eating your beans, right? Why? Because you're, 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 in, you're in the power position. You're in authority in your home. Well, God's in authority in the world and in the universe, by the way. God's first. God will not be second, third, fourth, or anything else. I've learned this principle, and it's up on the screen. If God isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. God isn't Lord of all, he chooses not to be Lord at all. He's either in your life, preeminent, primary priority, or he chooses not to be in your life. He refuses to be second fiddle, can we say that? Or second string, <laughs> or second chair. Uh, to anything or anyone. God will always and forever be first. Can I break this down for you? Say, break it down, Pastor. Break it down. Break it down, Pastor. If God were to run a race, he'd always come in first. If God were to play football, his team would always win the Super Bowl. If God were to play baseball, his team would always win the World Series. If God was to play hockey, they'd always win the Stanley Cup. God refuses to come in second. He will not. He cannot. He's the best at anything he does. And we are so far beneath him, it's not even funny. But yet we think we can even, are you with me? God is preeminent. God is highest, strongest, fastest, smartest, quickest, cutest, kindest, and the most loving person and personality in the universe. He's first, whether we like it or not. God is and he will forever be first. And it's going to end up in the end, we're all going to see. The Bible says this, this is in my message. It's at the end, at the very end, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, what? That he's first. That he's Lord of all. Now it would behoove you and me to do it before then. <laughs> right? Crown Christ and make God Lord of all now. Not, not on that day. It's going to be too late on that day. Do it now. Do it now. We're going to give you that opportunity at the end of, our, end of our service here in just a little bit. If God can't be first in our lives, he won't be anything at all. He refuses, again, to be second to anything or anyone. When God gave Moses, if you look at uh, the book of Exodus, the Decalogue, uh, the commandments, the laws, by which God led his children, Israel at the time, and our, his adopted children, that's those of us who have our personal faith in Jesus Christ. You know what he led them to do? He led them by giving them laws, rules, and regulations, how to live in relationship with God himself and in relationship to one another. And guess what the very first commandment God ever gave mankind was? Look at this with me. Exodus 20, verse 23. God says to his children in Israel, and Moses is writing this down on Mount Sinai. He says this, tell the people... And this is commandment number one. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And here's the commandment. You shall have what? No other gods before or besides me. What was God saying? God was saying this. I'm going to give you a commandment. This is the number one commandment. 
The very most important thing in your life, the, the greatest thing you could ever do in life is what? Put me first. You shall have no other gods before me or beside me. So don't put anything above me. And, don't, and God says, listen, don't even put anything next to me on the platform. You know, in the Olympics, you got first place, second place, and third place, you know. First place is up here, second place, and there's third place. God's saying, listen, there's no one else on the platform. That's what, that's what he's saying. God knew something about human beings, and he knows something about you, and he certainly knows something about me. Here's what he knows. God knows if we place anything or anyone other than him first in our lives, it will lead us into lives of disloyalty, disobedience, and unfaithfulness. Whatever you worship, whatever you put as the number one priority of your life will either lead you to God or it will lead you what? Away from God. God knew that. So he says, listen, I'm going to give you the first principle. Put me first. Put me first. And then, uh, and then everything else comes after, comes after God. That's what God knew. God established the principle of first, not only at the beginning of creation, but at the beginning of his rules and regulations and laws for how you and I are to live in relationship with him and in relationship with one another. All right? Whenever... The children, if you look through the Old Testament, whenever the children of Israel put God first, whenever they worshiped Him, whenever they obeyed Him, lived for Him, you know what, you know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. God blessed them. God protected them. God prospered them. God uh, supernaturally provided for them. I mean, rain down bread from heaven. Caused water to come out of a rock. Why? Because the children of Israel put God first. That's what happened. Now, you can also read when the children of Israel, God's, God's children in the Old Testament, didn't put God first. You know what happened? When they worshipped false idols, when they lived for themselves and rather than God, you know what happened? God said, all right, well, if I'm not Lord of all, I'm not Lord at all. And here's what he did. He said, have at it, boys. Have at it, girls. Try life without me. Just try it. See how that's working for you. It didn't take but about a day. And their lives went to hell in a handbasket, literally. Their enemies invaded, destroyed them. They, they pillaged their homes. I mean, read about it. The Old Testament's bloody. Why? Because the children of Israel, the times when the children of Israel were, were, uh, uh, were experiencing life out of order is because they forsook God. Then they would repent. They would come back to God. They said, God, forgive us. We put you first. God said, okay, now I'll come back into your life. I'll bless you. I'll prosper you. I'll and, then, and then a little while later, they, they'd have amnesia. And then they would reject God. It's really simple. Are you seeing how easy this is? Put God first, you're blessed. Take God out of your life. Take God off the number one position in your life. He's out. I mean, he's completely out. He's not number two. See, most people think, well, I can have a little bit of this and a little bit of God. No, 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 no. You can have all this you want and none of God. That's really what it is. It's either all of God or nothing. He will not, he, the Bible says he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. If you know anything about, if you ever fallen in love with someone, girls, you ever fallen in love with a guy? Guys, you ever fallen in love with a girl? Uh, if you have, you know something about love, I want that person all to myself. Well, I, I, I like you, but I'm going to date him too. Well, how does that make you feel? Oh, you, oh you, you're going you're to date both of them? No, 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 no. If, you, if you're not going to have all of me, I'm not, I'm not going to share you with him. Are you with me? And that's what we do with God. We think we can, sh we can have all these other things in, in our lives. God says, no, 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 no. I'm jealous for you. I want you all to myself. Isn't that cool? You know, we sang about it today. Lord, I'm amazed by you. And how you love me. See, God loves you so much. He wants, he's jealous for you. He's jealous for your time. He's jealous for your attention. He's jealous for your affection. He's jealous for, for, for your love. He is. Why? Because he wants you to experience the blessed life. Now today, let's bring it up to today. Today, when we as God's children, Put God first, amazing and wonderful things begin to take place in our lives. When we put God first, blessings and benefits that we certainly don't deserve from God 
will not only come into our lives. Here's what I found, and I've seen it not only in my life, but in the lives of many, many, many Christians. God's blessings and grace, love and mercy, not only come into our lives, they overtake our lives. I mean, you look around, when you live the God first life, you look around your life and go, I don't deserve any of this. God's been so good to me. Uh, it's abundant. See, that's the wonderful thing about the God first life. When we put God first in our lives, here's the thing I've learned. Everything else comes into order. Everything. It, it's kind of like some of us were raised on Rice Krispies, Rice Krispie, uh, you know, cereal. And, and they snapped, crackled, and popped. Remember that? Snap. When you put God first, this is what I found in my life. Your life will begin to snap, crackle, and pop into place. It just, it just comes, it's kind of like a chiropractor. God just kind of, and next thing you know, man, I feel great. <laughs> you, know, you walk out of the, and, you, and, and your shoulders aren't tense anymore, and your back's straightened, and, 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 and your feet don't hurt. That's what God does. When we put God first, he takes our lives, and he snaps and cracks and pops us into place. And he puts in order, in order, in our lives. And something wonderful begins to take place. When God's first in our lives, everything else comes into alignment, comes into alignment. Jesus, let's bring it up to Jesus. Jesus spoke about the principle of first, still talking about the principle of first. In his famous Sermon on the Mount, many of you have probably memorized this scripture. Matthew 6, says these words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, here it is, and all these things will what? be given to you as well. That's the God first life. That's the, the, the principle of first. Now here's, here's an important thing about this scripture. Before we seek the kingdom, we first must seek the king. Can I say that again? We must seek the king first before we seek the kingdom. Before we can live according to to the king's purposes and pleasure, we must first seek and meet the king. This is the problem, I believe, with so many Christians today. And I'm talking about Christians. They're sitting in churches around, across America and around the world, and they're trying to live out kingdom biblical principles taught to them by preachers and teachers of the word of God without ever meeting the king. It's craziness. It really is. Uh, so many people today are in churches trying to live the Christian life, and they've never met Christ. They're trying to live out the kingdom principles and do this and do that and don't do this and don't do that, and they've never met the king. This is the difference. I put it up on the screen. This is the difference between religion and relationship. It really is. It's the difference between religion and relationship. Christianity is all about relationship that's what this thing's all about Christianity is about you falling in love with the king the king's already in love with you well I did he already loves he lo he knows your warts and scars bruises and he knows all the bad stuff he knows all the good stuff he's got every hair on your head numbered and for some of us that's not a very high count he, and, he loves you. The question is, do you love the king? Do you love the king? Christianity is all about relationships, all about falling in love with the king. When we live for the pleasure of the king, we will naturally and joyfully fulfill every one of his commandments. Not because we have to, watch this now, but because we want to. We understand as Christians that God's will and commandments for our lives are not burdensome, they're a blessing. They're a blessing. Why? Because God would never tell us to do something or not do something without having a blessing behind it. As a parent, you tell your children, do this and don't do that. Not, not to be a killjoy in their lives and not just to, you know, Destroy their lives, what? But to bless their lives. I tell my children, don't touch the hot stove. Well, you don't want me to touch the hot stove. No, I don't. Well, why? Because I know something that you as a child don't know. 
that if you touch that hot stove, what's going to happen? Parents, their hands are going to get fried. Well, God knows something about life that you and I don't know. We don't have to understand all the de- Are you with me? We just have to say, you know what? He's probably smarter than I am. He's probably a little bit wiser than I am. He probably knows a little bit more about life and relationships and marriage and finances and forgiveness and, and all this stuff and health and healing more than I do. See, I'm just so simple. I just take God as the word. I've given up all that stuff. I, 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 you come into a deeper understanding, but I just trust God. Like I trust my mom and dad when they tell me not to do something. Can I tell them myself? Please, Pastor, tell them yourself. All right. I did some, I, I, had, I was one of those teenagers that sometimes I had to learn by going against my parents versus listening to my parents. Not that any of you as a teenager disobeyed your parents. Never, never do. Just me, just me, just me. And my father, I remember telling my father, he would say, don't ever lick a frozen pole. Don't ever lick a frozen what, pole. What's, what's the old man know about frozen poles? So guess what I did? Me and my friends one time? Yep, we did it. I can take you to the stop sign. About this time of year. About 35 years ago. Yeah. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to lick that pole. It was 25 degrees out. Frost on the pole. I can see the frost glistening in the night sky. Dad, I can hear my daddy's voice. Don't you dare lick a, a frozen pole. Don't do it. He didn't tell me why. He just said, don't just, I love you enough. I'm going to tell you, don't lick a pole while it's frozen. Guess what Dum Dum here did? And the Dum Dums that I was friends with, we all did it. But guess whose tongue got stuck to the pole? True story. <laughs> Honest to God. Froze there for 15 minutes. Stuck. My friends panicked. I, I'm a fan. Go get my dad. <laughs> Go get my dad. <laughs> Go get my dad. And they're like, we ain't getting your dad. They went to sawing their fingers on my tongue. True story. Then the next one said, I got him. I got him. And they grabbed my tongue. True story. <laughs> Pulled me off that pole. Ouch came out of my mouth. Blood came out of my mouth. Tears came out of my eyes. And I heard my father's voice, don't lick a frozen pole. You know what? There's sometimes God just says, don't do this. Just, just trust me. You don't want to do this. And when you say, you know what? I think God's a little bit smarter than me. I'm not going to lick the frozen pole. And it's not because he's trying to be a killjoy. It's because he's trying to protect us from life. Protect us from hurting ourselves or protect us from hurting one another. He wants you to live and me to live the blessed life. Amen? Can I say something that's going to shock every single one of you? God's not a child abuser. God gave me sickness. God caused me to have this accident. God took my, are you with me? God destroyed this and this. God's not a child abuser. That's the other guy. God's a good father. God's a good, good father. God is good all the time. And all the time, God's good. God's not a child abuser. He will not abuse you. If he tells you to do something, do it. If he tells you not to do something, don't do it. Why? Because he loves you. And he wants you to live the victorious life. Can I get an amen? Amen. And it begins by putting God, God first, in each and every one of our lives. Let me ask you today, do you have religion or do you have relationship? Are you just here following a list of rules and regulations if so, boy, I tell you what, this thing can be extremely burdensome. But if you're living life out of a relationship with the king, if you're in love with the king, you desire to do his pleasure. See, I'm not here, and hopefully you're not here this morning because you have to be here. You're here this morning because you want to be here. Big difference. The commandment of God is not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. He commands us to gather Every Sunday morning to worship Him. That's a commandment. Now you can come at that commandment as a law and a regulation. And you go, well, here I am at church again. I guess I'll sing. I guess I'll read what Pastor Tim wants me to read up on the screen. Or you can say, man, I get to be here today. I get to come to church today. 
I get to worship my God today. I get to love on Jesus and tell him just how great I think he is. I get to read from the love book. See, this is a love letter to you, to me, from the Father. See, same thing. But you come at it two different ways. Come at it from the relationship, and life will take on new and added joy for you. Religion tries to live out the king's will and purposes without ever seeking and meeting the king. Relationship begins by having a God encounter, then seeks after the king the rest of your life and seeks to please the king at every decision and every, every turn of your life. Let me encourage you, seek first the king, then his kingdom, and everything else will come into divine order in your life. And I've discovered this, when God can trust you with the first, he'll give you the rest. God promises that if you and I will seek him, we would find him. Jer Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14 says these words, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with what? All of your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Let me encourage you at the beginning of this new year to seek the king. Put God first. And if you'll do that, the promise is, God says, I will be found by you. I will come and I will do life with you through this year through this month, through this week, through this day, through every hour, through every minute and every second, God says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Isn't that great? Now that's a promise, twofold promise. God says this, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise of his provision and that's a promise of his presence. Everything you need, I'll provide it. Everything that you want, you'll have it. Why? Because I really am your magnificent desire. I, you will have my presence. Let me encourage you at the beginning of this year, this new day, new week, new month, new year, to put God first. Don't put God last in your life. Put God first. Don't treat God like the Red Cross. Only calling upon Him in moments of times of crisis and calamity. Put God first. Don't seek God's guidance, wisdom, and counsel last. Seek God's guidance and counsel and wisdom first. Don't turn to God after you've tried everything and everyone else. Turn to God first. Don't run after possessions. Don't run after promotions and prizes of this world. Run after God first. Put God first, then all other things come into alignment. And He'll do it. He'll do it. You put God first, He'll promote you. You put God first, He'll give you favor. You put God first, He'll open doors for you. You don't have to manufacture and manipulate anyone or anything. You just put God first and say, God, my life is yours. I give you control. I give it all over to you. Whatever you want to do, here it is. And, and God's going, that's what I've been waiting for. And he'll take you places and you'll experience things and you'll encounter, encounter uh, uh, people that you would have never dreamed about. Because God will do it. It's exciting to put God first and to live the God first life. Put God first in all you do and watch the goodness and favor of God overtake and overflow your heart and life. For whatever we do with the first determines the rest. Whatever we do first determines also what God does Next, whatever we do with the first determines what God does next. So determine and decide today, today, to put God first. Put God first has everything to do with priorities. It has everything to do with order, resolving, deciding, choosing as of this day, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to live the God first life. Whether anybody else does it or not, we're going to put God first. Can I say this as your pastor? Whatever anybody else, whatever the pastor does, whatever any other church does in this world, I don't care what they do. As of this church, we're going to put God first. We're going to love God. We're going to do what God tells us to do, where he wants us to do it, when he wants us to do it, and how he wants us to do it. That's just, I mean, you need to know that about me. We're going to do it God's way. And we do it God's way, it's blessed. 
Doesn't have to make sense. Doesn't have to. Matter of fact, most of the times it doesn't make sense. Think about this. God took the leader of God's people, three million people plus, to the banks of a river, the Red Sea. And they're looking at that thing. And, 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 and the enemies are coming, all right? Their enemies are coming up behind, from behind them to take them out. And God said, Moses, lift up your rod. Just lift up your staff. So he did it. Didn't make sense. And the water parted. And three million people that day walked across on dry land. It doesn't make, that didn't make sense. Are you with me? Sometimes God's going to tell you to do something. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. But if you'll do it, if you'll obey God, just do what he says. Live, God, I seek to honor you. This doesn't, I mean, this is kind of crazy. I'm going to lift up my, my shepherd's staff. And all of a sudden the wire went. And they saw miracles after miracle, after miracle, after miracle. And you know what? If you and I will live the God first life, we'll see miracles. We'll see the supernatural God of heaven and earth. Get involved in our lives, in our hearts, in our families, in our marriages, in our finances, in our future, when we live the God first life. When we put God first, all other things fall in to their proper place and alignment. After all, He alone is worthy, is He not? God alone is worthy of being first place in each and every one of our hearts, in each and every one of our lives and in each and every one of our days and weeks and months to come. I'm going to close with an illustration today. There is a story, maybe some of you have heard about it. It's a uh, story about a college professor. I know something about college professors because there is one. And uh, this college professor wanted to teach his students about the importance of priorities, about putting first things first in their lives to, in order to have and lead a successful life. And he thought long and hard about an illustration. How can I illustrate the importance of choices and priorities and decisions in, uh, in their lives? And so uh, he took out some objects. I'm going to take out some objects today. And he uh, lifted up, as I'm doing today, a glass vase. He said, class, imagine this. This glass vase is your life. This glass vase is your life. And all the things on the table here represent uh, choices, decisions, objects, Goals, dreams, plans, relationships, family, spouse, finances in your life. Everything in your life this is kind of represented by. And uh, he said, you know what so many people do is uh, they get life out of order. Uh, we spend the majority of our lives on the little menial things. The rice. The rice is kind of symbolized by, uh, oh, you know, social media. Uh, the internet, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, movies, arts, entertainment, television shows. You know, not that those things aren't, aren't bad, they're not evil. It's just sometimes they consume uh, the majority of our lives. And he poured it into the vase, into the life. Then he said, you know, after, uh, after the little things, you know, there's, there's kind of some bigger things, you know, that we have to be about, you know, like getting an education. We'll drop that into our lives. Whoops, maybe if I can get it in there. All right. Uh, you know, work. Work's kind of important. We've got to go to work, right? Got to make a living. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got to sleep. Matter of fact, the no number one thing you'll do in your life, over half your life, you're going to spend sleeping. That's kind of a big thing. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, there's... There's, uh, you know, making money, or education, uh, those kind of big things. And then there's, uh, there's you know, friendships. That's kind of a, kind of a big thing. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a family. You know, we kind of push that thing in there. It's interesting. We barely have room for family after we've done all this other stuff. Relationships, friendships. And, uh, you know, over there on the table, that's the God rock. It's God. Well, we don't have any room for God now because I'm so busy, you know, entertaining myself and, and going to school and working. I'm just, I can't come to church, Pastor. I'm so busy. I got I to gotta take out my new boat. One time I've got to take my, my new boats on Sunday mornings. Right? Got to sleep in. Right? Can't come, can't, can't come to small group. 
because, you know, I'm working overtime this year because I'm trying to make more money to buy a bigger house so I can pay more taxes and have more stress. Joke. Right? And where's God? God's over here on the table. Right? The most important thing in our lives is left out. And this is the life, unfortunately, that so many people lead. Maybe you led this life at one point in time in your life. It's a life without God, and it's a life out of order. And these people, by the millions and billions today, are in our world. You're going to meet them this afternoon at Walmart. And you can look, if you look close enough, I mean really look at people, you can see the unhappiness on their faces. You can see the stress, you can see the turmoil, you can see the strife. Life isn't working for them. Most people don't know why. Because the world won't tell you this. The world will tell you what? Get a bigger boat. Get another spouse. Get another job. Move there. Work there. Do this. That's what the world, are you, are you with me? Am I just telling the truth? That's what the world tells us. Do this and do that. They're not going to say get God first. It tells us to do all this other stuff. And, and we wonder, and so we do it. Right? And we wonder why life isn't working. And, and we get to January 2017, and we're like, I did everything the best self-help book told me to do, and I'm still frustrated, and my marriage is still going to hell in a handbasket, and my kids are still crazy. It's because life's out of order. We haven't put first things first. But watch this. Watch this now. When you, uh, when you get life in order, all right, let me take, uh, take it out here. When you put life in order, how everything just uh, almost supernaturally. Let's, uh, let's, this is the God rock, remember? This is God first. Here's our life. And as of today, we're going to put and decide. It's a choice for all of us. Your pastor has to make this choice. You have to make this choice. Your parents have to make your children, have, you can't make this choice for your children, your grandchildren. They have to make the choice for themselves. Your sister, your brother, have to make the choice. They have to make the choice. But you make the choice because you've heard this message. You were here today. Or you're watching online. And we're going to put God first. We're going to put the number one thing first in our lives. All right? We're going to put God first. And then we're going to put family. Family's, family's the next. We're going to put family. All right? And then we're going to put friends. We've got our God, family, friends. Those are the big rocks, by the way. Life is all about relationships, not about things. It's about people, not about possessions. Tweet that. I'm going to tweet something. Life's about people, not possessions. Some of the most unhappiest people in the world have all the possessions they, they want and then some. Are you with me? It's not about possessions. It's about people. That's the big rocks. Then there's possessions. You've got to have a house. Helps to have a car. A job, make some money, all that stuff. That's kind of the next layer of things that are important. Then comes all the little stuff. Ready for this? Then comes all the little stuff. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with entertainment. There's nothing wrong with going to the movies. There's nothing wrong with having a Facebook account, a Twitter account, Instagram. Nothing wrong with having uh, tickets to see the Cubs. Right? There, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's in its proper place. When everything's in its proper place, it all comes in to what? I'm going to get every last piece of rice in there. Isn't that something? Everything comes into order. When you put God first. It's not that you can't do all this other stuff. God wants you to take a vacation with your family. God wants you to go to the beach. God wants you to enjoy a, a sunset. God wants you to enjoy, you know, a good concert. Are you, are you with me? God's not, God's not against all that stuff. He's just against that stuff being first. 
Can you hear the Spirit of God? I mean, does this make sense? This is a life in order. This is the life God will bless. Because every day you wake up and you say, you know what? I'm putting God first. I'm going to put God first. I'm going to put God first. I'm just going to keep putting God first. And everything else will come into alignment. And everything else will have its proper place. That's the life God will bless. That's the life you'll get to the end of your life and you'll look back over every day, every month, every year, every decade you lived and you know what? You'll go, boy, that was a blessed life. That was a good life. And you, and you live life with no regrets. All in proper perspective, in proper place. By putting God first. Now, how do you get God? Here's the thing. That, that I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to, to conclude with. When God's not in your life, and you have all the uh, life out of order, every once in a while, here's what God does. If I could take that God rock out, He comes up and He does this. He knocks on the door of our hearts. He knocks on the door of our lives. Not every day. Every once in a while you hear, let me in. Can I come into your heart? Can I come into your, to your life? Can I come into your marriage? Can I come into your home? And he knocks from the outside. It's not until you and I open up our hearts, open up our lives, that God comes in. Revelation 3, verse 20, I conclude with this verse, says these words. Here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens up the door, I will come in to them and fellowship with them. The key to living the God first life, the first step, is inviting God into your life. Getting him from the outside into the inside. How do you do that? You do that by opening your heart's door. You do that by opening up your life to the Lord of life, the Lord of heaven and earth. By accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So today, on this first Sunday of this new year, I want to give each and every one of you here at the tab this morning, everybody watching online, I want to give you an opportunity to put God first by simply opening up your heart's door to the Lord. So if you would, bow your heads and close your eyes with me. If you'd say, Pastor Tim, that's me. I want to put God first in my life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Simply say these words. Heavenly Father, I come before you just as I am, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart and life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Equip me and empower me as of this day to live the God-first life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.